Hello everybody, my name is Jiggity Jack, and this is the best barrel flying locations. In this video, I will be showing you the best locations to fly your sparrow for the basic sparrow flyers and the more hardcore sparrow flyers, like myself. Just as a heads up, these sparrow flying locations will be in randomized orders from difficulty, so in other words, this list is just going to be in a random order. I will also be rating all the sparrow flying locations on the difficulty on how hard it is to get to that location and how good of a sparrow flying location it is, from a scale of 1 to 5 most probably. Also, there will be glitch spots as well, so just prepare yourself for that as well. So let's get right into the video. Coming in as an honourable mention, it is going to be the Mars Sparrow Fly, where you get on top of the ship and just get out the map. The reason I'm putting this as an honourable mention is because all you're doing is in infinitely flying in the void. Also, since you are Sparrow Flying outside the map, the chances are you'll just get kicked back into the map. It happens a lot. Not only that, but the ships tend to spawn in random locations, so it's hard to predict where the ships will spawn, so you've got to act really fast to get to the actual ships. Also, this is a timed event due to the fact of the ships just being RNG on randomly spawning. And once you do get out the map, it's kind of air. There's no obstacles up here. There's just you're just technically falling for an infinite amount of time, and that is why it's going to be an honourable mention. Coming in on the first spot on the list, it's going to be the Hellmouth Jump. So let's just get the basics out of the way. The difficulty on how to get here is going to be a 1 out of 5. Legit, you just have to fucking load up patrol and then just barrow your way to the Hellmouth. And then you can just start flying. The difficulty of Sparrow flying in this general area would have to be a 2 out of 5. Due to the fact of how low the Sky Barrier is and how high the Death Barrier is. If the Sky Barrier was higher, I would give this a 1. But for now, it's going to stay with 2 due to the Sky Barrier being so low. The Hellmouth is definitely a good area to start Sparrow flying. It has everything that you need to know. A basic infinity fly, you can Sparrow fly across it, and if you really wanted to, you can speed fly across it. And you even have the platform that you can land on where you start Crota Zen. And if you really want to push yourself with Sparrow flying, you can just jump down here to this... I don't know what the fuck this is called. But anyway, you can jump down here and practice your Sparrow flying here as well, but I do not recommend because of how small of an area it is. So this will be our first sparrow flying location. A difficulty rating to get there would be 1 out of 5, and sparrow flying there just in general would have to be a 2 out of 5. Coming in next on our list is the Cosmodrome. The rating I would have to give on the Cosmodrome to get there is definitely a fucking 1 out of 5, and sparrow flying there in general would have to be a 1 out of 5 as well. Due to the fact I'm giving this a 1 out of 5 is because of how high the sky barrier is, and how open this area is. Just look at how open this is. The Sky Barrier goes extremely high up in this general area. Not only that, but the Moth Yards is definitely a great area to practice speed flying as well. The Moth Yards is a massive place. You have the length to go speed flying, and you have the height to go infinity flying. The only downfall for this area would have to be the Sky Barrier being unpredictable in this general area. Up on the mountain there, the Sky Barrier is extremely high. In this general area where I am right now, the sky barrier seems a lot lower than up there. Apart from that, this is a great spot. And that is why I'm giving it both location to get to a 1 out of 5, and sparrow flying in general a 1 out of 5. <coughs> Coming in next, we're going to chuck in the vault of glass entry part. For this area to get there, it would have to be a 2 out of 5. Due to the fact that you can just simply launch up the Paradox mission, and then all you have to do is spawn your Sparrow, and then just get it into this general area. And Sparrow flying here in general would actually have to be a 3.5 out of 5. The reason I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5 is due to the fact that the wall barriers, sky barriers, whatever the fuck you want to call them, are pretty unpredictable. The area is definitely very open, but it is very unpredictable as well. Not only do you have to worry about the sky barriers, but you also have to worry about that massive wall that is sitting right behind you or in front of you. You'd be surprised, I collided with it quite a bit. So those are the reasons on why I give Glass a 3.5 out of 5 for Sparrow Flying, and 2 to get a Sparrow in there. Next up, we're going to have Glass again, but this is at the very end part of the Glass. Now to get a Sparrow to this location, it would definitely have to be a 4 out of 5. Due to the fact that not only do you have to get a sparrow down here, 
but you gotta get your sparrow past all the ads and get it down the massive fucking water glass drop so getting a sparrow here would definitely be a four out of five but sparrow flying here would have to be a three out of five reason i'm giving it a three out of five is because one it's a pretty open area but you have no safety points so if you screw up hit a rock or something hit the cliff you're gonna fall to your death most likely but due to how high the sky barrier is, if you're up high enough, the chances are you will most likely be able to recover from your mistake. So if you hit like a cliff or something, your sparrow is just most likely going to fall and then you're just going to lose it. And then that's, that's going to be for probably what, another 15 minutes of just clearing ads, getting your sparrow through, and then getting it past all the ads in the second part in the Gorgon maze. Honest thoughts of this area, I would not recommend it due to the fact of how long it would take to just get down there. And since there's plenty of other better spots, you can just go to them apart from this. If you really want to though, go for it. So again, getting here is definitely a 4 out of 5, and Sparrow flying here is a 3 out of 5. Next up we have the Black Garden in Patrol Mode. Patrol Mode. Patrol Mode. To get to the Black Garden with a Sparrow, I'm going to have to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Due to the fact that you actually have to Sparrow fly to a Sparrow flying location. But Sparrow flying in the Black Garden would have to be a 2.5 out of 5. Getting there is definitely difficult and time consuming at the same time. First you got to get past this little section, then you got to get past two loading zones, then get up onto this little roof. And yes, I almost screwed that up. Then you got to find the entrance of the Black Garden. After all that, you might screw up, and if you screw up, the chances are you'll have to go all the way back because you won't be able to spawn a sparrow in the black garden or in the general glitched area that you're in. This is definitely a high risk, high reward spot, but once you get there, oh, oh, oh. Now the reason I give this area a 2.5 out of 5 is due to the fact that it's, again, pretty plain and vast. Because all you, it's sim pretty similar to the moth yards. All you're doing is sparrow flying up and down and since there's not many platforms that you can land on less than what the moth yards had it is much more difficult not only that but the sky barriers are very unfucking predictable in this area the sky barriers slash wall barriers are just randomly scattered all over the place it's just really strange how they've positioned all these sky barriers and wall barriers so sky barriers are a pretty big problem in area the actual sky barrier though is extremely high when i mean sky barriers and the ones that are your problem are actually the wall barriers they're pretty much the same thing they just fuck your day over if you're sparrow flying not worrying about the sky barriers and wall barriers though this is a massive area to sparrow fly in apart from the unpredictable walls and stuff it is such a massive area it's probably one of the biggest i've ever sparrow flied in bigger than the boulder glass most likely not only that, but I'm pretty sure they've just fully removed the death barrier. So if you fall, you'll be falling for a long time. So that gives you plenty of time to recover. That's if you still have your Sparrow, of course. So this spot, getting there, definitely a 4.5 out of 5. And Sparrow flying here, a 2.5 out of 5. Finally, we have my personal favourite, the Terminus in Patrol Mode. Don't forget... The Black Garden and this one, the Terminus, are both done in patrol mode. These are for very good reasons and I'll be explaining to you on why I do it in patrol mode. So firstly, how hard is it to get up here? I'd have to give this a 4 out of 5 to get up there. Because you've got to do a double sparrow fly. Just watch this clip carefully if you want to learn how to get up there. If you wanted to, you could just do the one of the House of Wolves missions. But all the death barriers will still be existing. Sparrow flying up there in general though is definitely a 2 out of 5. The reason I'm giving it a 2 out of 5 is because it is actually a really easy and enjoyable place to sparrow fly in. And just as a heads up, this is what I mean by no death barriers. If this was during one of the missions, I would be dead already. There would be so many death barriers down there that death would already be dead already. Anyway, so yeah, 2 out of 5 for sparrow flying. I say 2 out of 5 because the sky barrier is insanely high. Well, not insanely high, just extremely high. Not only that, but that middle platform is like the perfect checkpoint. You can do normal sparrow flying, infinite sparrow flying, speed sparrow flying, and you could just use this middle platform as a checkpoint. It is in the perfect position. 
not only that, but if you fall down into the abyss foggy area, you can still recover your sparrow, if you land it, of course. Since there's no death barriers, you'll just land down there, maybe with a damaged sparrow, but that's the only bad side about it. You can sparrow fly back up if you're a good enough sparrow flyer. The only downside to this area is that if you fall down and lose your sparrow, you'll have to get your sparrow back up here. And getting your sparrow up here can be pretty difficult for the newcomers. Since this is a 4 out of 5 position to get up to, it will be pretty difficult for you to get back up. But if you do manage to keep your sparrow while down in the foggy area, it's still going to be difficult. But all you have to do is find a little ramp or jump to get back up and get some air. Because as you see, if you fall down, you will fall down for a long fucking time. But apart from that though, this is a great sparrow flying area. Again, I give this a 4 out of 5 to get up to. But a 2 out of 5 for sparrow flying up here. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content. Just as a heads up, I do plan on reworking my Sparrow Flying tutorial and Infinity Flying tutorial due to the fact that I think it was just very lackluster. Please leave a comment if you think I should or shouldn't. But apart from that, I do plan on doing a series with subscribers on teaching them on how to Sparrow Fly, Infinite Sparrow Fly, and eventually Speed Sparrow Fly. But apart from that, thanks for watching.